Probably it is hardly known to most people in what a blossoming Elizabethan Jacobean age of English literature William Shakespeare lived, and to what extent and in which diversity printed book genres existed in Shakespeare's time. Regarding the period between 1575 to 1625. Before I ask the question interesting most, let me show you, out of hundreds and hundreds of books of Shakespeare's time, a partial list of key title words, characterizing the basic content and the enormous diversity of the book genres in those years. Contrary to earlier times, all those books of Shakespeare's time are digitally accessible, online today. Listen to title keywords of an almost unbelievable diversity of book genres. Academy Adventures Advocate Anatomies Annals Answers Anthology Appeal Apologies Anti-romances Apothegms Arraignments Atropoean Banquets Books Caveats. Challenge. Chronicles. Complaints. Compendium. Conciates. Conference. Confutations. Considerations. Consolations. Controversies. Cures. Declarations. Defenses. Delights. Description. Devises. Dialogues. Dictionaries, Dirge, Discovery, Discourses, Egglogs, Elegies, Elements, Emilims, Encomiums, Enemy, Epigrams, Epitaphes, Epitome, Epistles, Essays, Examinations, Expositions, Fancies, Fictions Moral, Flare Ira, Fortune. Fragmenter. Funerals. Histories. Hymns. Humors. Instructions. Itinerariums. Invectives. Lamentations. Laws. Legends. Letters and answers to letters. Madrigals. Meditations. Memoratives. Messages. Mirror. Miscellanea. Miseries. Motives. Motto. Narrations. News. Novels. Odes. Orations. Observations. Pamphlet. Parables. Paradoxes. Paraphrastical transcripts. Pastorals. Passions. Philosophies. Practique. Principles. Poems. Poetical comparisons. Politic. Portraitures. Praises praises. Psalms. Questions. Quadlibuts. Recantations. Recreations. Register. Remarks. Remedies. Replics. Replies. Resolves. Resolution. Retractive. Rhapsodies. Sacrifice. Satires. Scourges. Sermons. Similes. Sonnets. Songs. Summons. Survey. Tales. Tears. Theodoric. Tracts. Transcripts. Translations. Treasuries. Treatises. Trial. View. Visions. Vox. Warnings. Wealth. Wisdom. Works. And. Many more. Corresponding to this enormous diversity of contemporary book genres, you may be interested in the unknown multiplicity of its author's name in that age, dealing with that book genres. The following incomplete list of the writer's names, 1575 to 1625, gives you an idea.
The real problem is, that unfortunately only a tiny fraction of the vast contents and contexts of those contemporary book genres is known today to so-called Shakespeare experts. Up to now many specific texts never could get a meaningful interpretation since they have not been understood in its full scope. Let me demonstrate this with an example. The artistically written anonymous essay, The Great Assises, experts assume the author George Wither, served the true poet, Marlowe alias his multiple pseudonyms, as a metaphorical general reckoning with the society, with his life situation and with his fate. The author gives the reader some broad hints, that the jurors of the great assises in reality represent additional identities of himself, who had to write under many pen names inclusive Shakespeare, as mimic. As absurd and ridiculous this may sound, this truth of a historical multi-pseudonymous reality can only be understood, if you delve deeper into the contextual matters of the contemporaneous jurors of the greater sizes. The poet is lamenting to the supreme judge Apollo, the god of truth, of poetry, about a wicked head, Shakespeare, who has so abused typography and obviously provided his name as an homme de plume for Shakespeare. He wishes that typography had never been used as an instrument of art since it is now possessed by someone. Shakespeare, who has in art no interest, employed as a paper waster, a mercenary soul, a poetaster. He reveals his mercenary penmen of the stage, his other identities, which should stand with him such as Shakespeare, a mimic Massinger a sot Haywood, drinking from the muse Argonip, a source of inspiration Beaumont and Fletcher, together only one poet All errors of the muses, all abortive wits, all foul fountains of abuses The true poet genius Christopher Marlowe, alias Shakespeare and many other pseudonames, intellectually artistically far ahead of his age, from early on in his prodigal life, must have written, for safety reasons, under pen names. Consider that no printed book with his name has existed during his lifetime. After his public slander May 1593 the deadly endangered poet was forced to feign his death abandon identity and name, and continue to write anonymously under initials, pseudonyms or pen names, partly of deceased or still living persons, such as Shakespeare. A contextual analysis of single books, of those jurors, discloses that they do not represent different identities, but a variation of the same author, provided you are able provided you are able to consider the incredible possibility, that multiple authors of those unknown genres were identical with the officially dead poet, Christopher Marlowe, who nevertheless had survived.